what's going on everyone i'm joe this is so you want a crypto and today we're going to have a little fun we're going to take a look at the simpsons and their formula for the this has been used to do some predictions for dogecoin bitcoin some other stuff and i tried to look around and see if i could find some uh some descriptions of what this actually is it's a formal logic proof so today being a mathematician and all I'm going to explain this to you. We're going to go through each step of this and explain to you, is this a magic formula or actually it's kind of just a little bit of a pun. So first off, if you like this, if you find value in this, subscribe, comment, and if you see any discrepancies, please let me know. So here's the formula. And this is a screenshot from one of the episodes of The Simpsons. And we see all this gibberish and whatnot going on here. So, where do we start with this? Well, first of all, this backwards E is an ex existential quantifier. And it basically says that there exists some Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, or Filecoin. And this double arrow is an if, I-F-F, -F, is how it's spelled. And it basically is, it means if and only if, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. Uh... It basically means that like A infers B, B infers A, A is mutually, A mutually implies B and vice versa, A is logically equivalent to B and vice versa, B is logically equivalent to A. So it's kind of sometimes misused, but that's what we're trying to say. So this would be A, this would be so. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Filecoin are logically equivalent to the SHA-256 is secure. So if a secure hashing algorithm 256 is secure, then there exists some Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Filecoin. That's what this first statement says. So the next is the prove statement, and it basically is telling us what it wants to do. Prove that there does not exist some secure SHA-256. So SHA-256 is an algorithm, is one flavor of SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm, and this is the SHA-2, which was created by the NSA in 2001 as a successor to the SHA-1. The 256 is a patented cryptographic hash function that outputs the value into 256 bits. So, but this is not crypto, like a transaction. It's not cryptography. It just... It's a one-way thing. You can't decrypt a hash, right? Not like this. So, but anyway, that's what they want us to prove. So, this is the proof, right? So, this was the question that they pushed out into the street, and then this was the answer that somebody wrote, and they were trying to figure out who it was, and they were too smart for Springfield. There exists some secure SHA-256 if and only if RSA is correct. So, what is RSA? RSA is right here. It's the Rivest Shamir Ottoman. It's named after the people that uh, basically invented it. And this is where we get our cryptographic function. Because because we have a public key and a private key, you've probably heard of that. So now, if the RSA, basically, have we established a cryptographic public and private key? If we have, that's one of these. So now we get to the M E D is congruent. The three lines means congruent m mod n for all m in the set of zeta which is integers what the hell does all that mean so m that's your block e that's your encrypted key d that's your decrypted key congruent basically means that it is an exact overlay of the other uh m that was your block again so mod it's this is a type of modulus ad addition and without really getting into too much math it's basically a form of math where you use the remainder so the remainder n would be the the number right and this n is basically uh the block number whatever block number you were talking about and upside down a like this is for all m would be the blocks and this weird e is our members of a set and then the Z right here, this means integers. And now below, when we see these parentheses, these are stating the knowns of basically what we're talking about right here. So N, the block number, equals PQ. P and Q need to be prime. 
E and D, so the encrypted and decrypted need to be congruent to one modulus phi function n. Again, without getting into too much math, you know. Now we come down here, and this is a p to the, one, the negative one, or p minus one, a, and then the exponent is p minus one is congruent with one mod p for all a's that are in the set of integers. And this right here is just a general statement that applies to basically all finite fields, uh, which is common in proofs, right? You're trying to show and give all the reasons why this is true. So a and p cannot equal zero, and a cannot equal zero modulus p. But, and then here's where they go with the disproof of a and p does equal zero. Since in 2015, a and p went bankrupt. Uh, here's a and p made the one mistake, and they filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2015. So you see it's a joke. Uh, and the three dots means conclusion. This E backwards with the line through it, that means that they're now, it, it's an existential quantifier, but it's a negative one. So there does not exist some Bitcoin, Litecoin, Doge, or Filecoin, QED, which is Q, uh, quad erat demonstratium or whatever. And that basically means, uh, which was to be demonstrated. Uh, so this is your conclusion. So basically, we could not demonstrate that all of this was true because A and P went to zero. So it's a joke, right? But it's like a really, really mathy, smart joke. Anyway, I hope you had some fun with this. I threw some links in here to give you a little bit of fun. So you can hash anything that you want to into a SHA-256. So let's say we want to crypto. It's right here, that's your hash for crypto. I can put my name in here, Joe. That's my hash 256, uh, my SHA 256 hash for my name. I can put in anything I want, right? So, comma, you want to crypto. There you go, 256 hash. It's an interesting concept. That's basically how crypto, you know, like uh, these keys work and then it's based on remainders. So you probably remember remainders in math. So there you go, that's what you got. Like, subscribe, comment. So you want a crypto?